Coming up, we've got a couple of wireless flash drives, two 15-inch laptops, one thin and light, one big, heavy, and fat. We've got the ultimate laptop companion, or is it? And I have the newest waterproof phone from Sony. It's all coming up. Time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hello, welcome to Before You Buy, the Twit product review show where we get the latest and greatest products and dole them out to our staff, let them live with them for a week or two and give us their uh, their impressions of what it's like to, to own the gear. Uh, we've got some great reviews coming up, but first uh, let's start off with something that I think could be very convenient, but well, well, let's let's find out. Victor Bognat is one of our newest, I think he's our newest employees, our newest editor anyway, and uh, we gave him a couple of wireless flash drives to test out. Let's see what Victor thought. Hi, this is Victor from Twit, and today I will be reviewing two mobile Wi-Fi drives, the SanDisk Connect Wireless Flash Drive and the Kingston Mobile Lite Wireless. These two devices try to solve the same problem. Lack of storage on your mobile device, like your phone or your tablets. Here's how they work. After turning on the Wi-Fi drive, connect directly to the drive through your Wi-Fi settings. Because you're connecting with an ad hoc Wi-Fi connection, you will lose your connection to the internet. Each device has their own respective app available on the iTunes App Store, Google Play, and Amazon App Store. You can also browse the drive using a browser on your computer or wireless device. Even though connecting to each device is the same, as you can see, they both have different form factors and how you would use it would be different because of their features. So let's start with the SanDisk Connect wireless flash drive. The SanDisk Connect is a USB 2 flash drive and mounts as one when you connect it to your computer. They come in capacities of 16, 32, or 64 gig, but only the 64 gig model supports XFAT formatting for large file sizes. The internal battery can last about four hours. The SanDisk Connect can stream to three devices simultaneously, and 720p video streams fine, although SD video is more reliable. One thing to keep in mind is when it's plugged into a computer, it turns off Wi-Fi and is only a flash drive. The app is actually well designed and browsing files on the drive is smooth. However, it gets quirky when you need to change your wireless settings such as the Wi-Fi network name or if you need to add password protection. So pros for the SanDisk Connect wireless flash drive. It has a small form factor with no extra cables or connections. It has easy connectivity and reliable file transfer. The 64 gig in the microSD port can be taken out for expansion. With the latest updates, the SanDisk Wireless Flash Drive mobile app is well designed for browsing files. Firmware updates can be done through the app, and it can play iTunes DRM movies through Safari. Cons? Saving your settings on the wireless app are not really clear. And for the price, at $99, the 64 gig version is more than a dollar a gig. And even though it's a little bit expensive, I would still give it a buy because the software package and along with the hardware make it a great experience. Now, the Kingston Mobileite Wireless would be in the same category as the SanDisk Connect, and it's less expensive, but it has a few caveats. For one, it is a little larger physically in size, and you have to supply your own memory. It can be an SD card or a USB drive or both. The Mobileite wireless app allows you to navigate not only the connected drives, but also your device. You can transfer from the drives to your mobile device or vice versa. The most important function with this device, however, is that you can even transfer between the drives, such as after a day of shooting photos to back up on another drive. The transfer is actually really fast. I found an SD card with about 380 megabytes of pictures from my DSLR transferred to a USB 2 thumb drive in a few minutes. You can stream to three simultaneous devices and they claim five hours of continuous use. So pros for the Kingston Mobileite Wireless, it's versatile with using different types of drives. Transferring between devices and drives is actually pretty quick. It has emergency charger capability and this device has Wi-Fi security settings such as 
being able to hide the SSID. And for the cons, the Mobileite app is slow compared to even the SanDisk Connect app. It claims that it can play iTunes DRM files through Safari, yet I had problems on my old iPod and even on my Mac. Firmware updates are not always through the app. There is one that you will have to download from the Kingston website. Even though I had a few frustrations with the Kingston app, um, it, this would still be a buy just because the versatility of being able to use a USB drive or an SD card and even to be able to transfer files between it. Between the two, if you're in the Apple ecosystem and you wanted to use this mostly for iTunes movies that you've purchased, I would suggest the SanDisk Connect just because it, it handles, the software handles those DRM files better. Like it even prompts you to open Safari automatically when you choose the file. The Kingston was a little more finicky with that. That was a little frustration there. But if you needed a way to back up your photos off of your SD card onto a bigger drive, this would actually be a good solution. And there you go. I'm Victor from Twit and this was the SanDisk Connect wireless flash drive and the Kingston Mobileite wireless. I agree with Victor. These are really convenient little tools. I have the Samsung, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the SanDisk Connect. And it's kind of handy to have that extra uh, storage lying around. Now we're going to say hi to our producer, Shannon Morse. She has one of two 15-inch laptops we're going to take a look at. I don't know why you get the giant <laughs> one. This is a clearly a desktop. I should have given this to Radford. Yeah, he should <laughs> lug that around. This is obviously a desktop replacement. <laughs> so Tell me about it. Yes, it is. So this is the Toshiba Tekra W50. In particular, this is the A1500 model. It costs $2,000 on their website. Wow. But you can find it for a whole $1899 if you really want to save okay. 100 bucks. At that point, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's obviously a desktop replacement. Yeah. And they are touting this as a mobile uh, workstation so it's for engineers and it's for visual artists uh, people that work on a lot of video and you can definitely see that when you look at the screen uh, very very large re resolution it's 1900 by 1080 it can do fully support 1080p video so I actually pulled up a video for you and you can also hear a little bit of the speakers uh, the speakers are clear, but there is absolutely no bass going on in there at all. Um, so the speakers are a little me mediocre, but as far as the screen goes, it is not a touch screen, so you can't touch anything, but it is made for visual artists. So you can definitely see very nice 1080p video on that. As far as what's inside of this baby, it has uh, you know, everything that you would expect out of a mobile workstation. It has 500 gig uh, hard drive. It does not have a solid state drive. Kind of wish it did because the boot up time is a little bit slow now that we're, we've been spoiled with solid state drives. Uh, it does have 16 gigs of RAM, which is freaking crazy good, which is awesome. I love that. And it does include Windows 7 instead of Windows 8, but it does include a Windows 8, uh, it's Windows 7 Pro. It does include a Windows 8 Pro edition license as well. So if you want to upgrade... Is that can, included in the price or...? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. so you, you kind of get the choice, in other words. Yeah, it's yeah. already automatically included. Yeah. Um, as far as the specs of this guy goes, though, it's... It's six pounds, so very, very heavy. And then you have this gigantic brick that comes with it. <laughs> That's the power brick? Wow. This is the power brick. It's That's another laptop. so huge. I thought it's it was heavy. a barbell. You were lifting it into build build your muscles that's there. a good three that pounds is really right heavy yeah yeah you, this is not portable by any <laughs> i means. would not take this you're talking 10 outlet. pounds altogether. yeah it's very very wow. heavy so it's obviously made for you know hardcore people that need this kind of laptop um i wouldn't take it with me anywhere so the speakers are pretty decent uh the keyboard is really nice and spaced out it does include the little nubs so if you you prefer that you can use that it also has the right and left clicks up here so if that's the way that you like to use your mouse pad then you're just fine the mouse pad is really nice too it's very smooth it's very easy to use and you didn't have to learn anything new to be able to use it they give a really nice click back feedback so i didn't have any problems with that and it includes all the ports that you could ever want <laughs> honestly there's everything there's a vga HDMI, port there. VGA, wow. the sata slash usb smart card two usb 3.0s headphone has this weird one that I've never used, which is a media dock, I believe it's called. That's a, probably uh, a proprietary. Yeah. And then they don't have HDMI, HDMI on there, though. There is HDMI. Well, right I, okay, I missed side. it. Oh, yeah. okay. There it is. Pretty baby. And there's also a DVD uh, 
drive right here yeah. and a uh, another smart oh that's a pc card there oh, PC PC card. Card. yeah wow, i haven't wow. seen one of those in a while yeah so it includes everything that you this could ever feels want. antiquated doesn't it? it feels like older hardware it does. It, it's it's very <laughs> i know it's they announced a new w50 but it, it's not gonna be after the summer so yeah so that one comes current. out in the summertime and basically they're upgrading the screen it's going to be a 4k okay. screen but for now this one was released about two months ago or so tell me you get great battery been, life so the battery is about five hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's oh, kind of mediocre for yeah. this range of product right. but you know, this is for a very targeted market. This sure. isn't for everybody in the world. Obviously, this isn't something I would go for because I like ultrabooks, but it's definitely made for, you know, visual artists. And for 2000 bucks, you do get an i7 uh, Haswell yes, i7. Mm -hmm. And tell me about the graphics. Is NVIDIA graphics, so it's it's dedicated yeah. graphic processor? Yeah. yeah, it's dedicated graphics. Uh, the graphics are pretty good. I didn't have any problems with it. I didn't see any, any kind of lag or anything like that. So I really like the graphics, to be honest. And 16 gigs of memory does tell you they're thinking AutoCAD or, yes. or uh, you know, Render Man. Or so. You're doing yeah, some heavy duty stuff. Plenty of power. Stuff. Even the hard drive is uh, 7200 RPM, I believe. So that's pretty pretty decent as well. So you can get into your files very quickly and you won't have problems with like uh, processing or anything like that. So my pros and cons for this, I like the high resolution screen. I'm glad that they didn't drop it down to, you know, 768. Not at that, that price. Would be terrible. In fact, they're going even higher, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It has all of the ports that you could ever need <laughs> as it well. Does. On the con side, there is no solid state drive and the mediocre speakers. I really wish that they would have included something a little more hardcore, especially if you are an editor and you need to make sure that this, the sound quality is good. But at that point, you're probably using headphones anyway. So buy, try, or don't buy, I would give this a try. It's not the best mobile workstation that I've seen, but for the price, it's pretty darn good. All right, and heavy. And, and, uh, and I guess, it, as you said, it's for a certain kind of user. Yes. And you know exactly. who you are, somebody with big arms. Thank you, Shannon Morse, producer, before you buy Snubs, at Snubs on the, on the Twitter. Uh, I, you know, I like these little portable speakers. I have them. I have the Me Bose, too. the big Bose uh, sound link, too. Uh, I carry jam boxes around. When you travel, having a Bluetooth speaker is great. We gave uh, Brian Burnett, our technical uh, <laughs> whatever he is back there, our technical director back there, uh, three portable speakers to try out, a Sewin, a Jawbone, and a Bose. Here's his review. Hi, I'm Brian Burnett, and here at Twit, we review a lot of Bluetooth speakers, but these speakers fall into the high-end spectrum of the ultra-compact Bluetooth speakers. All are well-made, look good, and come in around $200. Now, the first one I'm going to take a look at is the Bose SoundLink Mini. Bose has a reputation for making high quality speakers and this one is no exception. At first glance the Bose Mini has a very nice design, it's easy to manage the buttons and it comes with a base that you use to recharge and the battery lasts up to 7 hours. And it does get very loud and it doesn't distort even at some of the higher volumes but uh, one of the pros of this speaker is it does have a very good bass for its size but as you turn up the volume the bass can start to cover up some of the high-end sounds but as far as Bluetooth speakers go this one is very bassy and has very clear sound next up is the Jawbone Jambox mini speaker that comes in at $179.99 now the Jawbone Mini is the smallest of these three speakers that I'm looking at and it feels very well built. It also has an aluminum housing. I do own one of the first generation regular size jam boxes and side by side with the Mini it sounds just as good as its bigger sibling. But this smaller jam box doesn't have the same range and volume. Now the Mini jam box boasts nearly 10 hours of continuous playback. And once again, for its size, the Mini provides clear sound with little to no distortion, but that's mostly due to the fact that it doesn't get very loud. Finally, the last one is the Soen Transit speaker that comes in at $199.95. The Soen is another well-designed speaker that feels really well built as also. Just like the Bose, this speaker has very good mid and low bass for its small stature, but it also has an additional feature that the Bose doesn't. It has an integrated microphone just like the Jambox for hands-free calling. The Soen has cleverly integrated a kickstand to help prop itself up. The Soen 
claims up to eight hours of continuous playback. And as for portability, this one is lighter than the Bose, and I would be more inclined to travel with the speaker than to lug around the uh, SoundLink Mini. Now for the Roundup, my favorite of the bunch would be the Bose SoundLink Mini. It has great sound, good bass, and aesthetically I like the design of it the most. But it is the least portable, and if you wanted more protection, you could buy a colored plastic case for $25. Uh, but this is more of a speaker that would sit on your desk and attach to your laptop. The Jambox Mini is the most portable and comes in a variety of colors for your preference. It delivers good sound for its diminutive size, but you're going to want to use it in a quiet room as the volume doesn't get very loud. Now the Soen has very good sound, it gets quite loud, with the advantage of being light, lighter and slightly more portable than the Bose. It also, like the Jambox, has a microphone for hands-free calling. Any one of these speakers could be a buy depending on what you're looking for. The Bose is a buy if you want a Bluetooth desk speaker for your laptop. The Jambox is a buy if you want something slim and portable to carry around. And the Sewn would be a buy if you want something premium, but also compact and portable. If I had to buy, try, or don't buy, and only choose one of each of these speakers, I would buy the Bose, try the Jambox, and don't buy the Sewn. This has been Brian Burnett from Before You Buy. Thanks for watching. Well, there you go. It sounds like you've got uh, one out of three ain't bad, to, to quote Meatloaf. Uh, <laughs> or misquote him, anyway. Uh, let's move on. Thank you very much, Brian Burnett, our technical director. Does a great job switching the show for us uh, every week as we do the live version of this show. Uh, Radford Castro is our engineering director here, and we always give him laptops, too. Now, I don't know how this worked out, but you got yeah. the sexy, light laptop, and Shannon got the big, heavy, <laughs> workhorse laptop. This is a Dell XPS 15. I've been a yes. Dell XPS user for ages. This is kind of the, the IT Pro laptop yeah. of choice in business, yes. right? And possibly for gamers, too. Oh, really? Well, yeah, tell us about it. This thing has crazy power behind it. And this is, so it's a 15-inch laptop. This is the XPS 15. Uh, and it's pretty much aimed at pretty, uh, your mid-range up to high high end. So we're looking at the 2299 model. Whoa, so this is even, this is 300 bucks more than Shannon's. Yes, <laughs> it's 300 bucks more. But this is the Ultrabook style. Right. And it, don't, it doesn't have all the crazy MDs like this, like, you know, a heavy adapter or like a DVD or a PCMCI car or anything of that sort. This is for right. the executive, the CEO, executive, yes. the C-level, yeah. or the IT guy right. who gets to choose whatever he right. wants. <laughs> right. And it's, uh, it has touch, some really, it has, right. it's touch-based. And um, before I get into the display, because this is that's really the big piece here, um, it has some really nice specs. You're looking at i7, okay. has well, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of SSD. SSD. Yes. All right. Uh, three 3.0 USB ports, uh, mini display, HDMI, Bluetooth 4.0. All the good stuff you'd expect, cameras, all the whiz bangs that, yeah, that you'd expect yeah. to see, including an SD card. So it's really nice. Just from the top, just looking at the, the, the specs alone, it's really, really nice. What I really wanted to show off was just the speed at which the display runs at. So this display, and this is the thing that really knocks your stocks off, is it's 3200 by 1800. It's really close. It's, it's better than Retina. Wow. 3200 by 1800. 1800. Yeah, it's close to 4K. 4K well, is really like 3800 nice. something. Yeah. Right. So. I mean, very high res, and yet no trouble pushing those camera. pixels. Yeah, it must have a dedicated graphics adapter. I'm yeah, thinking it's, it is. And yeah. the, the the graphics adapter is a GeForce. It's a 750. Uh, 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 G Nvidia 750 yeah. is very good. Yeah, 750 GT. Yeah. yeah, so it's pretty ridiculous. And I'm just gonna snap some of this stuff together here, but yeah, it's really, really, really fast. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm thinking this is kind of the creme de la creme. Yeah, let me just follow spend up. 300 bucks more and get this one. Shannon, don't buy that big, heavy old one. <laughs> I think I would. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of liking the dis display. Yeah, the love the display, love the touch. The app with all the drinks How about battery it. life? We were only getting battery five life. hours out of the Toshiba. This one is pushing seven hours. Okay. Right now, if I'm just looking at the desktop. Even with that big screen. Even with this huge screen, just pointing at it right now. You know, Dale's always had the reputation of being uh, kind of the tanks, the boring tanks, this, the, right. the kind of gray boxes. This is pretty nice. It's pretty sexy. You think that it's reestablishing Dell as, as a... Yeah. Designer, they're, really, uh, they're pushing themselves to the limit with this this yeah, line. So yeah. the XPS line has always been something that's very high end, right. mm -hmm. you know, pushing more pixels and pushing more specs out the door and trying to get things more thinner. I loved my XPS 13, but it looked a lot more like that Toshiba laptop. It was a big old honking brute. <laughs> right. This but is sexy. This the is good looking. The new 13 is beautiful. The one that I reviewed last week, I loved it. 
Yeah. So this is comparable to the 13, just to the 15 inch version yes. of it. Yes. But the 13 doesn't have the same resolution either. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. a little, little bit lower key than well, this. Well, this is 2300 bucks. Now you can get a lower resolution screen, a small, shorter, smaller processor, and right. that kind of thing right. for lower money. You, you, this sounds like we got the top of the line. Of yeah, the this XPS is the top of the line. Actually, you'll expect this kind of resolution even at the mid range. Really? Yeah. So that's that's saying a lot. Yeah. All things considered, um, this is a 4K video, and since we've been talking about MWC. This is a, a Barcelona demo, and it's running at, this is 4K per se, but obviously we're running at 3200 by 1800. No frames looking, dropped, beautiful no frames fluid dropped. motion. I mean, just looking at it, it right now, the way it's just, do that. yeah, it just destroys anything I've seen before. Yeah. So, um, I mean, just looking at how the texture is, I mean, there's, and this is a YouTube video of all things, you don't even see the artifacts. Right. So it's really, wow. really sharp and ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, obviously the people that are seeing this from the audience won't, you, we'll you're you're see seeing this. it in a lower quality. Right, but, absolutely. Yeah. So, but I mean, just being able to see things like you're inside the trading station and seeing all the different detail. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, it's man, nice. It's just off the wall. So here are some things too I wanted to show off. Um, so it does games, feel very fluid too. Oh, it's very fluid. Well, you'd have to a lot of the horsepower to push all those pixels. Right. And as I was showing that to you, these are actually games that are running in the background. Wow. And. That one just stopped at that moment because <laughs> I just had it running for so long. But <laughs> finally gave up on yeah, you. Yeah, finally gave up on you. But 16 gigs of RAM doesn't hurt. 16 gigs of RAM doesn't hurt at all. Let me see if this pickled me still works. Oh, <laughs> that stopped too. <laughs> oh, you killed it with a 4K I video, it. I think, yeah, is what much. happened. You're Here's not going to play sports. Halo. No. But at least we can see <laughs> just even the fact that we're running at this resolution, a lot of the games are supporting it. Yeah. So. We're this would be a good gamer games. laptop, then, you think? Oh, it's great. Yeah. Um, if Brian pulls up some of the specs on there, here it is. These are actual fun games running at 1366. <laughs> yeah. But um, these, this is actually very respectable frame rates you know, for these top games that we're seeing now. But that's a very low yeah, resolution. Yeah, these are low resolution, but the, I mean, a lot of the gamers are, are yeah. playing at either low or somewhat Because they want high. the high frame rates. Yeah, they want yeah. the high frame yeah. rates. And here are some of the comparisons with other laptops. You know, and in terms of just 8.1 performance, running 8.1 on Windows, I mean, it's, it's, it's close to beating the higher-end laptops, but those laptops by itself are, are higher priced than this one. So right. you're getting very good value for the dollar. So um, let's get the pros and cons, right? So the pros is um, it actually looks good, too. So that's one thing I didn't get a chance to talk it about. It is gorgeous. It looks yeah. like, well, it's an Ultrabook. I shouldn't right, say it's right, gorgeous. Right, right. Is it metal, plastic? So this is weird. It has a little split personality. This is a brushed aluminum okay. on the front and on the back it is carbon fiber yeah and That's nice. the, yeah it's really really clean I mean it's a, it's sort of like a, a look that you get used to but this is one thing I really like it's a matte surface so it's very resistant to fingerprints love that and uh, it's of course is using the convex type style keyboard so your fingers fit re right well how this much is, does that weigh this is about 3.6 pounds okay wow yeah. So Half I as mean, much in comparison, as yeah, this like destroys yours. Like if you're gonna start your workouts, you use this laptop first. I'm glad but, we started with Shannon's and ended up right, with yours. Right. So if you want to do like less sets, you do that one, right? Yeah, you want to do yeah. like higher reps, yeah. you use this. So one. Shannon's strength training year for more endurance. Exactly. Yeah, okay, you want to do endurance okay. stuff, you you work with this laptop. You know, if you want to work with both, put them on a backpack. Um, well, so yeah. this sounds good. I mean, great battery life, beautiful display. Uh, it's good, nice fit and finish. Oh yeah. Though. Good pros. Uh, what is the con? The cons? Just an ugly adapter. <laughs> <laughs> an ugly adapter and that it You're is... You're like looking for cons at that yeah, point. Yeah, I was looking for cons yeah. at that point, but I really don't see that many cons. This is a nice choice. Right. You've looked at other 15-inch uh, Windows 8 machines. Would this be your choice among, among all yes. of them? Yes. So with all the choices, I mean, I'm giving this a recommendation, so it's a buy. It's a buy. Mm -hmm. Twenty two ninety nine, dollars uh, as equipped, but it yes. starts at $1,500. Mm -hmm. It's the Dell XPS. 15. I like it. This is the new Dell. You know, they bought, they, they went private. They, uh, Michael Dell and uh, some investors bought the shares back. And uh, I think maybe this is Dell saying, see, we're not just gray boxes. We oh, do, no. we do, not we do other that. stuff too. Yep. Very nice. Thank you, Redford. Redford Castro, our director of engineering. Yeah. Before You Buy continues now, we're going to take a look at something called the ultimate laptop peripheral. This is a weird beast, but that's why we gave it to Father Robert Balliser. He's going to review the Velocity Micro VM Ultra Drive External Peripheral Thingy. I'm Father Robert Balliser, the digital Jesuit, and if you've got one of these, maybe you need one of these.
The VM Ultra Drive by Velocity Micro is an external all-in-one device that combines an optical drive, a USB hub, a hard drive caddy, and a media card reader in a single USB 3.0 enclosure. Measuring 6 inches by 5 inches by 1.4 inches high and weighing 1 pound, the VM Ultra Drive is designed as a companion for Ultrabooks, a toolbox for techies, and a desktop-based accessory. The VM Ultra Drive can be customized with either a DVD-RW or Blu-ray DVRW optical drive, and your choice of 2.5-inch storage device. No matter the configuration, Velocity Micro packs the drives, cables, and power adapters to make the device work in all situations. In addition to the optical drive, the VM Ultra Drive is a USB hub with two USB 3.0 and a single USB 2.0 port. Next to the USB ports is a media reader that will accept SD, SDHC, and MMC memory cards. On the bottom side of the unit is a removable cover for a bay that will accept 2.5-inch SATA drives. Using the VM Ultra Drive is trivial. Connect the power, hook up the USB 3.0 cable, then plug that cable into your USB 2.0 or 3.0 compatible port. USB 3.0 supports 5 gigabits per second, which means that it should be plenty fast enough for the optical drive and the hard drive, stressed only by the fastest of SSDs. Needless to say, since USB 2.0 supports a max transfer rate of 480 megabits per second, the VM Ultra Drive will work on slower buses, but it's not ideal. In use, the VM Ultra was fantastically fast and flexible. Not only did I use it as an optical storage companion for my Acer S7 Ultrabook, but with the drive loaded up with a few of my favorite installs and tools, the VM Ultra became a natural companion for my builds and troubleshooting. The VM Ultra Drive is available now with a one-year standard warranty. You can find it online starting at $99. On the pro side, they definitely got a lot of things right with this drive. Everything from the size and the format to the weight to the fact that they've really packed in a lot of features. Everything from the optical drive to the USB hub to the media card reader to the USB hard drive caddy down below. This is one of those rare products that delivers exactly what it promises and that is an external USB all in one. On the con side, I, I'd have to say the only thing really is the size of the power adapter. This kind of keeps it from going portable all the time. However, there is a trick. You see, the only reason why it needs the external power adapter, which can provide 40 watts of power, is because the typical USB 3 high power port can only give out 20 watts of power. If you try to plug this into your computer with a rotating drive, it just won't power up. There's not enough power. However, the trick is to use an SSD like this Samsung or this Kingston. You see, SSDs use a lot less power, and if you put one of those into the VM Ultra Drive, well, it powers up just fine. And then you can save the power adapter for when you get home and you need that full-powered USB hub. In all, I'd say that the Velocity Micro VM Ultra Drive is a great companion for anyone with an Ultrabook or any notebook without an optical drive for that matter. Not just that though, I think it could be useful for any geek who wants a single unit that could provide all his tools, give him the optical drive, the hard drive with all his software, all his utilities, all, all his diagnostics, all of his ports so that he could plug in the various bits and bytes that he needs to get things up and running, and uh, maybe wants it all in one place. For me, I'd have to say that the Velocity Micro VM Ultra Drive is a definite buy. I'm Father Robert Balasser with Before You Buy. Uh, you know what? That's 150 bucks. It's a lot for 150 bucks. It's pretty good. Just a little bit more than you'd pay for a DVD player alone. I think that's pretty cool. Thank you, Robert Balliser. Father Robert does uh, This Week in Enterprise Tech, Coding 101 with Shannon Morse. Uh, what else does he do? He does that thing where he comes gets together on Friday and talks. Oh, that yeah. thing, too. You heard Wait, about that one? Padre. Padre's Corner. Padre's Corner. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. We love having him around. Hey, we're going to wrap things up with a look at uh, a Sony... Xperia, you know, I've been really interested in using uh, these Xperias because people who love Sony uh, uh, really, they, they've got the an Xperia fan club going here. Uh, this is a new one that is T-Mobile only in the United States. Uh, that means you, you're going to take advantage of T-Mobile's uncarrier pricing, about $600, I think $588. Uh, you can get it for $22 a month if you do that monthly thing. Uh, and, uh, of course, T-Mobile doesn't lock you in. So uh, that's a good deal. Um, but uh, let's take a look at it uh, in terms of an Android phone. It is a couple of disadvantages. It's not running KitKat alas. It's, uh, it's still running uh, Jelly Bean. And I think that knowing uh, Sony, th th there may not be an upgrade path to this, particularly since we should mention that this is the Z1S. 
the Z2 has been announced at Mobile World Congress and will be out in uh, just a few months. Why would you be interested in this? Well, the chief points are, one, it's waterproof. It adheres to the IPX5 and 8 standards. That means you could continuously submerse it. In theory, and I didn't try this because I have very bad luck with water and cameras, you could actually shoot video and pictures underwater with it. So they're selling it as that. Dustproof as well. So I'm always nervous about this, but uh, I'm going to take Sony's word for it. You can't shoot it. underwater, did you? Yep. <laughs> and and it has a 20-megapixel camera. That's the other uh, selling point on, on this. 20 megapixels a lot uh, for a camera. And Sony has their own sensor technology. I found that the images were not not particularly good. Now here we are in a lit studio and I had uh, you know uh, 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 you know chance to you were you were not moving. I told you sit still mm. and it's an okay <laughs> picture oh, but didn't it's, know you'd need a shot there. You didn't know I was doing that, did you? No, I did not. Um, it uh, doesn't blow me away. I mean 20 megapixels, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. I mean I'll zoom in on Radford's necktie. There's, there's there's detail in there, but it is a JPEG, and so some softening as well. I think if you want a great camera, you should probably be better off looking at a Luma 1520 or a Lumia 1020. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, those are Windows Phone, and this is Android Phone. Uh, I don't know if it's the best Android camera. It, it seems competitive with the Galaxy S4 13 megapixel camera, the Note 3 13 megapixel camera. That still camera. doesn't have a shutter on it either, right? Yeah, okay. no shutter, yeah. Uh, the other thing I don't like about this uh, is, you know, they're claiming this kind of fancy screen. Sony calls it a full HD triluminous display with X reality motion picture engine. To me, it just it looks a little washed out. I'm not crazy about it. I'm a little bit jaded because of the AMOLED displays I'm used to, but I don't see anything really special about this screen. It's a 5-inch 1080p display. Um, it is pretty fast, 2.2 gigahertz quad-core Qualcomm uh, chipset. Um, dust resistant, water resistant, good battery life, got through uh, the entire day with me. They claim 15 hours of talk time. That's pretty darn good. Um, so if you're looking for a waterproof camera, a uh, waterproof phone, I should say, with a very good camera, one of the best, uh, a nice form factor, it's pretty, uh, this, this might be a good choice for you. I don't usually get waterproof cameras because I get bugged by these covers. But you know, <laughs> all the new uh, phones, I should say, I keep saying camera, all the new phones have these, even including the S5, and it just drives me crazy. You have to is pry that, that open. Is there a cover for the charger too, for the charger port? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's oh, all wow. covered up. There's no openings on this thing. Wow. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, an, it's nice. It's not something I would go right to mother about. They're pretty good about, you know, their, uh, the cruft. You know, I'm a big, as you know, Google uh, uh, phone experience. Uh, I prefer kind of the plain Jane Google. Um, I resisted putting my uh, own launcher on here just so I could uh, play with the Sony launcher for a while. It's not too bad. doesn't get too much in the way. Uh, that's, that's not really singing its praises, but it, at <laughs> least it's okay. Sony also uh, has a number of its special applications on here in Sony Store. and They have a Sony magazine. Everybody's doing that now. Uh, it has a Walkman uh, app in it. $10 a month, you can have Sony Music on here. Again, none of this to me is uh, particularly distinguishing from other stuff uh, that's out there. I'm going to say pros, uh, decent industrial design, good screen, five inches. I always like the bigger screens. It has, it's waterproof and dustproof, decent, pretty good camera, 20 megapixel camera. Uh, cons, it's, it's, uh, it's jelly beans, not Kit Kat. Um, and uh, and I don't like the ports for waterproof, so I guess I can't make that a pro and a con. It's waterproof, <laughs> is pro, it's con, it's got ports, all the waterproof cameras do. I'm going to have to give this a try. If you're on T-Mobile, T-Mobile has a lot of the best phones out there now. You, it's good, you have a lot of good choices on the Uncarrier. I think that this is a nice phone. It's, it's one of those things, I think Sony, like I said, has its fans, and if you're a Sony fan, you'll certainly like this phone. I think I'm not a Sony fan. So it's not for me, but it might be for you. I'm going to give it a try. Not a don't buy, but a try. Uh, go to the, your T-Mobile store and play with it. Take a look at the camera. See how you feel about the screen. Um, this is a problem because it's such a crowded category now. It's hard for a phone <laughs> to stand True. out. Mm -hmm. The next generation, which comes out in May, 
uh, we'll have 4K video. That'll be the big difference. Sony was all excited about that. Who shoots 4K video on your phone? I don't understand that. Soon everybody. Everybody. <laughs> Galaxy S5 <laughs> does it. Everybody. <laughs> everybody uh, does it. Uh, so a try on the Xperia Z1S, the waterproof version of the Xperia. By the way, the Z2 is waterproof as well. Similar uh, design. Well, that wraps it up. We had some point. We have a lot of stuff. A couple <laughs> of laptops, a bunch of speakers, that weird thing, doohickey for your... Uh, laptop. I want to thank Father Robert Balliser. I want to thank you, Shannon, and of course, thank you, Radford, to Brian Burnett as well, and Victor uh, for their reviews. Thank you for watching. We, uh, we make all our reviews available in a couple of different ways. You can get individual reviews on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash before you buy. You can get the whole show there, but you can also get it at, YouTube, at uh, our, we our website, twit.tv slash byb. If you've got a request, something you'd like to see, Please email byb at twit.tv. We'll do our darndest to get it in here and get a review on the air for you. Uh, we do the show, and it's kind of a, a different version of the show. We do it in a, in a truncated fashion because we don't have a whole lot of time, so you'll just see a little bit of the reviews. Uh, but if you want to watch, we love it. It's right after security now, about 3.30 p.m. Pacific, 6.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. 23 plus 12 is 15.30 plus 8. 23 2330 UTC. It's, I have to oh, do that math every single time <laughs> on uh, Tuesday afternoons. <laughs> we'll see you back here next week, okay? Thanks for watching. Remember, you gotta watch before you buy. See you next time.